Hey guys, what is up? Dave here, coming back to you with another just kind of talking video with visuals and stuff like that. I came across a Facebook profile that I hadn't looked through before I added the guy as a friend on Facebook. But looking at the profile, I'm not going to show off the profile because I don't want to like leak somebody's information that I shouldn't in a YouTube video or whatever. But looking through the account, it's very apparent that they are self-taught and that they developed a lot of bad habits when starting to do electronic repairs themselves uh, with their own storefront. So what I wanted to do today was make this video on why I understand people are against right to repair when it comes to third-party repair shops. I have the website Mobile Centrics open because they are probably the best source for buying parts for cell phone repairs and tablets and other things, but mainly cell phones. And I wanted to show off some of the things and show what the right tools to use are or the right types of things to use when it comes to doing a screen repair as well as pricing. So the way you want to look at it is most shops have a like labor rate you know, an amount per hour, very similar to a car mechanic. And they will charge you this amount regardless of if they finish it in an hour or two hours. Some repairs just are easier than others. And I could have five Galaxy S22 Ultra repairs in front of me, let's say right now that I need to do. Let's say they are all screen repairs and the person is okay with going with a refurb screen. So me ordering that refurb screen depends on the color. We'll say just for easy math, it's 220. And it's you know, it's this screen. The screen is 220. I'm probably going to charge another 100 bucks for that repair because the labor is kind of intensive and it's at least an hour and a half repair if I'm having bad luck and doing no frame. But nearly 95% of Galaxy screen repairs, I'm going to do it with the frame because it's so much easier. So add another hundred bucks to that just because it is maybe like an hour and a half repair if it's going really badly. If the phone is just not having any of it, maybe there's some cleaning of liquid damage that I find that I just want to do to help the customer. That's kind of what those little extra, you know, that little extra hour and a half instead of just being like, oh yeah, I can finish this in 35 minutes, is for, is cleaning up the phone, making it presentable to the customer. You always want to give stuff back in better condition than you received it. Every time I get a phone to repair, or a tablet, or a computer, I make sure I clean out all the dust, I clean out all the gunk from like maybe their kids playing with it. Oh my god, kids' tablets are disgusting. I don't get it. Like, I a kid's tablet should be studied in a lab for what is just growing and stuck to it. But I'll clean all that off and I'll give it back as if it's borderline brand new. But I'm still going to add, you know, in this case, an extra hundred bucks. And I'm going to give a longer estimate just in case of all those factors. You know, who knows? Maybe a cable rips while I'm doing it because that accidents happen during repairs. These things are tiny. The components are fragile. I have to cover my butt. You have, you know, if something happens, I have to have those spare parts on hand. So 330 is not bad for an S22 repair at all. But you also have to take into account how much is a used device. If we go to S22, let's say unlocked. Let's say the customer's device is in good condition, but like they broke the screen. But let's say they're not happy with the amount of storage. They're very close to filling it up because they got a base model storage because it was a carrier locked device when they bought it. So they got 128 gig S22 Ultra. That S22 Ultra in fair condition, let's say the customer's is worse than fair condition because the screen is broken, their device is probably only worth maybe 200 bucks as trade-in, especially if it's a carrier lock device, it is worth 150 bucks maybe, 100 bucks to cover the cost of a screen. So, you know, I'd give them 100 bucks for their phone, and then they would spend another two. 100 300 for a new phone and they could get a better condition phone let's say 
We want good. It's okay for it to have a couple scuffs and scratches. So at the moment, 470. Now you need to keep in mind that Swappa's fees are built into this price. So realistically, that's like a $425 phone, which, like I said, I'm charging like 330 for a repair. Let's say they want a higher storage. They are going to have to unfortunately pay the premium for a higher storage, but S22 is pretty old now. Galaxy S23. Oh my god, I'm hitting all the wrong buttons. 23 Ultra. They are pretty expensive, but I could give a little bit more of a trade-in amount because they are getting a higher storage. Let's go good, and we'll say unlocked. Now, let's say they don't care if it's locked to the same carrier that they already use. Let's say they use AT&T. Still a $700 phone. Let's say it's a Verizon phone. Still an $800, $700 phone. Surprised, actually. Yeah, I'm really surprised. Um, <laughs> that unlocked is the cheapest option. They are still getting an upgrade. Now, that's a little steep for most people. Let's use an iPhone more as an example. iPhones are very cheap to repair. Let's say somebody comes into your store and they have an iPhone 11 still. iPhone 11, it's going to cost me, I usually use X07 screens. It's going to cost me 20 bucks for the screen. It's going to cost, you know, $60 labor to do the screen repair. Roughly $80, $90 for a screen repair on an iPhone 11. I'll probably charge 100 because there's a little bit of finickiness that you need to do as far as like... Um, Face ID and True Tone and all that. You need the fancy tools for it. Realistically, $100 repair for an iPhone 11. Let's say they don't want to pay $100 for an iPhone 11 because an iPhone 11 now unlocked is $200. That's half the cost of the phone. Okay, maybe they want a new phone. Let's say they want to do a 12 Pro. They really want a nice upgrade because they want a better camera. You know, get them the 128 gig storage, do a data transfer for them, take their phone in on trade because it's a $20 screen. You're going to make money if you even give them 100 bucks for the phone in trade. And then charge them, you know, let's say you get the phone at a uh, wholesale price of like 250 You can, You are still making money even if you sell it to them for 350 and just they pay the difference. That way they walk out with a new phone and you have, you know, a new phone that you can throw a $20 screen on and sell that phone for 150 and that covers a lot of the cost. Yes, you need to be in the business to make money, obviously. That's how this world works. But you know, having a customer upgrade and leave with a better device with all their data transferred, that's a way better value, especially because you can add that data transfer onto the cost and just be like, look, let's do this. The data transfer is going to take three hours because you have a hundred gigabytes of photos and videos on your phone, plus all your apps and your contacts and things like that. Just we'll do an even swap data transfer for your iPhone in trade. And then you just pay the difference for the phone. That way they think they got a service for free and you're selling the phone for the full amount. There's all these little tricks when you run a shop that you can do to do that. Now, let's talk about actual repairs and supplies you need to use. If you're doing an obscure repair, let's say a Google Pixel. Google Pixels are not popular to repair by any means because there's always a problem with it when you're done. <laughs> but they make... Where is it? I forgot I had a copy and pasted. They make this special tape for... That's double-sided, five millimeters thick, very good stuff. You heat it up just a little bit so it sticks even better before you finish the repair and give it back and then just clamp it. That'll make the device not as water-sealed tight as it was from factory, but it's a great way to hold the phone together. This is the right way to do it. A lot of technicians out there now will super glue a phone shut. No joke. They will use like B8000 or something like that, I think is what it's called. B8000 glue. They will use this stuff. 
and glue your phone shut. This is the wrong way to do it because if that phone breaks again, holy crap, good luck getting it apart. This stuff is not heat sensitive. It's not going to loosen up when you heat up the screen. You're going to make things worse for whoever has to open that phone again. Do not use super glue on phone repairs. It's not 2012 anymore. We have Tessa tape. This is the right stuff to use. Use this. Or even with a lot of phones, you have proper pre-cut adhesive. This is the iPhone 13. Pre-cut adhesive. Just have this on hand. Generally, if you're doing screen repairs, you're going to be using this stuff. Do not use super glue to glue a freaking phone shut. I remember doing that way back when a customer would be like mad at us for something. We would glue their phone shut to make it a headache for the next shop. Surprisingly, it never bit us in the butt. But even still, you do not want to do screen repairs with the wrong part quality and stuff like that. Like it's it's absolutely ridiculous. And then there's cost of repair, which I know I already went over a little bit, but like let's talk liquid damage or gross devices. You know, $190 for like liquid damage, a basic liquid damage repair, completely fine. But if I get that phone back and I find out all you did was clean it with an alcohol wipe and you know, dig my pocket lint out of the charge port on my iPhone, I'm not going to be happy about it. <laughs> $190 is too much for that. And then the other thing that I've seen recently is like data transfer costs. Oh my God. Let's say some 60 year old woman comes into your store and she still has a flip phone in 2024, but her cell phone service provider, let's say it's AT&T tells her, Hey, no more flippy phone, no more flippy phone, do no work with our service. She has no idea how to get her contacts off. You know what you can do on 95% of flip phones that have been made in the last 20 years? Bluetooth. You know what's really cool also on a phone that's a flip phone that's been made in the last 20 years? VCF files. You can export the entire contact list of somebody's phone Bluetooth it to the smartphone and then import that VCF file and not have to worry about doing things one by one. As long as that phone has Bluetooth, even if it has micro USB, it'll probably show up the same way that you plug a flash drive into your computer and you can just drag and drop it to the new phone and then it'll import. It's so easy. The fact that people are sitting here and charging $10 per contact to manually transfer contacts is absolutely asinine. If somebody has 15 contacts, you think they want to pay you 150 bucks to transfer some contacts? If they do that math in their head, they're realizing, holy crap, I could do this at home for nothing. It'll take me maybe 25 minutes. It's data transfer costs. I won't, I'll do a data transfer for like 75 bucks. Maybe even less, depending on what is entailed. So when it comes to the data recovery stuff, Let's say it's a Windows computer or a Mac OS computer. Generally, all we're doing is backing up the user folders where all the user data is stored. So on a Windows computer, for example, all of that is going to be C users right there. And then you have the usernames of the people who, you know, use the computer. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to back up. I'm going to enable, you know, show hidden items and stuff like that. To make sure I get everything because sometimes application data will be saved here. So, for example, if you get somebody who's a programmer, they come in and they want their Visual Studio projects backed up as well as all their basic data. If you don't have hidden files and folders enabled, you might not see the uh, repo folder for Visual Studio, which is where all the projects are. It's hidden in here. It's no longer under Documents Visual Studio anymore. That's not where source code is for software. It's in here, unless they manually changed it. But generally, this is all we're going to do. When it comes to phones, it's a little bit crazier because we can use tools like 3U tools for iPhones to do a complete mirror image of the original phone and then transfer it to the new phone. Or with like Samsung devices, you can use Samsung Smart Switch on any device on the planet as long as the phone you are transferring from is a Samsung. There's also tools for other um, phone brands like Google has a built-in version uh, of data transfer that's built right into the source code of Android now 
that you can access during setup. Um, and I don't remember how it all works on like Motorola's LG doesn't make phones anymore, so they don't even matter. Um, but yeah, that's just kind of my point is data transfer. You don't need to sit there and charge per contact. That's ridiculous. You don't need to charge per, are you going to charge per picture that you manually drag and drop over when all you have to do is, you know, control a, and then drag and drop that's, oh my God, <laughs> it makes my blood boil. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm going to end this video here. This is just a rant kind of video on, you know, general shop behavior that I understand why people are mad about third-party repair. I really do understand it. It's because there's too many people in the field that just don't know what the heck they're doing. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.